Hey guys, it's Jan, also known as Zen Bluster. I have partnered with DXN Provisions, Mass Damper, and Black Fabrica to bring you guys a new build series starting with a Super 2 bumperless and body damper setup. Many of the parts are from DXN Provisions. Mass Damper will be painting and sticker tuning the body, and Black Fabrica accessories were used for this build. In this video, we will be installing the body damper. Okay, so first we're going to be using these uh, roller spacers to be able to widen the gap between the wheel and the chassis. When we did the trimming on step uh, on part one, we ended up uh, trimming the hub um, a bit narrow, specifically for the front wheels. And uh, when we did that, that made it a little bit too tight for the back. So we need to widen up the gap a little bit so that we could fit the body damper. Okay, so now we're just um, removing the wheels and then we're putting the beveled edges away from each other. The spacers are going to be facing the wheel and facing the bearing. Remember, the beveled edges are going to be uh, looking away from each other. So there you go. Now we have a little bit of room and that should be enough for the uh, body damper to clear once it's uh, installed later. I'm going to check the other side too, make sure everything's uh, even on that side as well. So there you go, and then it's tightened for both sides as well so that it's even. You know, you don't want to tighten your transmission too, too tight or too loose because you'll lose power either way. Now we're going to be working on the uh, center frame for the body damper. That's the piece that's going to be holding everything together near the battery. That's going to be hitting the battery once it's uh, actuating. We're going to be cutting off the mounts for the rear for the um, on the Super X carbon piece. We don't need that anymore because we just need the center portion where the frame is going to be connected to both sides. There you go. So we're going to be using the MF70 again we're taking care to um, center it and make sure that when we're trimming it's even. I ended up um, cutting it a little bit sideways initially, but uh, since there was a little bit of room to adjust later, I was able to actually make it even again because um, I you don't I didn't cut the um, the pieces too deep. You know you don't want to cut too deep, uh, basically, or too much off of the material first since. It gives you room to correct an issue later. So luckily, um, when I was doing that, I was basically doing this. I was cutting a little bit of length bit by bit. And if you do it like this, instead of going all the way to the bottom and cutting it at the bottom, then if there's an issue, you could still correct it. And uh, when, uh, when you do this cut, that gives you room to be able to fix issues later on if that, that happens. Alright, so doing the same thing here, a smaller depth cut again, so get a little bit more of the material off. we we'll just take care to vacuum up the carbon every once in a while just to make sure it doesn't fly all over the room the more you cut. So, alright, so this is about as deep as I went when I realized that there's a little bit of um, unevenness. Um, once I figured that out, I remounted the... Um, the frame basically the frame catch and that allowed me to fix the slightly sideways issue you'll see later I think this is when I readjusted there you go yeah, there you go now it's uh, after I've done that adjustment everything was uh, basically um, evenly cut at this point there you go cutting it uh, I think it, uh, whenever you're doing the depth cuts you just go like 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters down so that you could fix the issue. So here you go. A very square depth cut for the uh, FR uh, for the carbon piece right here. You can see it's uniform on both sides as well. All right, next piece we're going to be using the F MF17 mill again. We're going to be using the same cut, but it's going to be a little bit shallower. We're not going to go as uh, thin as the way that we've cut the other piece because we need to keep the center 
Um, this is going to be cut in multiple steps and uh, we're going to be using the MF70 again to do the same cut, basically. Alright, so we're doing the same process. Cut a little bit off, bit by bit, just to make sure that it's, um, you know, square. And then if it's square by the time it's that deep, then we continue. So there you go. We've removed that. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting it in the middle right here. We're going to split the two sides because this is going to be the piece that's going to be used to um, uh, hold the side dampers. Right, so there you go. You can see that there's a difference in the depth of cut that I used. And then we're going to be splitting this carbon piece in the center because we don't need, we only need the uh, the two side catches basically. So we're also going to be cutting off the edges later and uh, we'll do that once we've uh, split the piece right here. Alright, so there you go. The piece has been split when we use the rotary tool. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, sandwich them together and then cut off the excess in the middle because we don't need that as well. We only need the side catches. So I'm going to be showing you that I'm just going to be cutting the edges off right there. That two, that center portion that it used to be, we're going to be removing that. So, all right. So we've sandwiched them together so that when you cut them, they're at least fairly even when we um, cut them together. Just making sure that it's tight so that it doesn't uh, come apart while it's being milled or it's being rotary cut right here. So we're going to be cutting off the excess right there. And as you can see, that's how, about how much I've left. So we're going to be cutting off the, the tip on, the, on that side of the damper first so that we have a little bit more uh, control on the mill. There you go. All right, so now we're going to be mounting it on the mill and we're going to be cutting the inner edges a little bit more. You know, we can go a little bit deeper because we want it to be square and um, using the mill when you're cutting basically makes it as they're sandwiched together and makes both pieces square up against each other basically as similar as possible. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the cut. As you can see the uh, There you go, we have a uniform cut on that side. Now we're going to be removing the uh, one of the screws, or two, two of the screws. We're going to be mounting it sideways on the vise, and we're going to be cutting off that angled piece that was uh, protruding earlier, And because we don't need it. We just need the screw hole, basically that third screw hole, to be able to mount the uh, dampers on. So here you go. We're going to go ahead and take a look at how that cut is. So there you go. I just took a little bit of material off so that it's a straight cut, basically. As you can see, we're going to be milling a little bit more of that edge as well too at the top, just to make it um, flatter. Mount it back on the MF-70. And then we're going to do a very slight depth trim. Not very much material is going to be taken off of this one. We just need to make sure that it's uh, accurate. Basically going in the depth of like 0.1 millimeter or 0.2 millimeters every time. Okay, so there you go. A very even and square piece of uh, side catch for the body damper. Alright, so next step is we're going to be cutting out the body damper support arms from the back to the front. So we're going to be using another one of uh, Ferry Mish's uh, mounts for the MF70. This is going to be specifically for the body damper arms right here. Check him out on in Instagram and he's also going to be in the links in the video description down below. 
this piece allows you to mount um, the uh, popsicle piece onto the MF70 and then the MF70 will allow you to make even, even cuts like this. All right, so we're going to be cutting from that star and then from that eye on the mini four wheel drive. All right, so we're mounting the uh, piece again, making sure that it's uh, square. And with the way that it's designed, it actually forces the piece to be square up against the table. So it's very convenient and it's very well designed. It's, uh, it's one of the most favorite things that I got recently. And uh, here you go, I'm just using the cutter. This is my 1 16th uh, end mill bit right here. This is the uh, two flute. And here you go, we're just uh, going from one side to the next. And then once I'm at the letter I over here on the piece, we push a piece forward and then we cut that extra uh, off. We don't need that anymore. All right, so we're just cleaning it up while it's on the mill before we take it off. There you go, very simple cut right there very even it's very impressive what this uh, mount can do so if you guys want to check it out um, buy it from him if you have the mf70 he's in the links in the video description down below all right so now we are going to be cutting off the excess we're going to be keeping the center of this frame this is going to be the uh, frame on the battery catch right here so we're going to be um cutting that off so I use the rotary tool first so that it's closer to where i need to go and then that's a little bit thinner after that's done we're going to be mounting it on the mf70 mill as well and then that'll help us uh, square it up make it even on both sides so here you can see I'm doing like a fairly long uh, trim, but you want to go just a little bit in terms of depth. You don't want to go too deep when you're cutting because if you do that, you risk actually damaging the piece that you're going to be cutting. So right here, bit by bit, in terms of depth, we're cleaning up the piece to make sure that we can see um, where it's cutting. And then now we're actually going to be cutting on the other side. I didn't flip it. The other way because I need to go see the print and that allows me to figure out where the cut needs to go uh, use it as a reference visually and um, we're, we're doing the exact same step on this side we can't quite see it but it's uh, we're using that print on the carbon piece to make it square all right so after that's done there you go a little bit more of a depth trim Again, yeah, I'm here comparing it to see if both sides are square. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take a look. There you go. That's going to be the center piece for the body damper frame. You know, it's even on both sides, making sure to square it up. All right, so we've removed the body damper frame from the mount. And then we're going to start fitting it on the frame, basically on the chassis. And uh, we've measured it now. We're going to be seeing as well first um, how deep we want to go on the spacers as well. So before that, we're going to be countersinking the body damper catch right there it's going to be three holes on each piece um, and then you know the same thing that we did last time we have this uh, uh, what do you call it the bit stopper so that it doesn't go too deep and that helps us make it so that the uh, countersink is square every time that you press that down as long as you don't wander uh, too far off of the axis of rotation for the bit then it will be square. 
because the uh, bit stopper kind of helps you flatten and uh, make it even as you push it down. All right. So last hole right here for the uh, body damper catch. I'm going to take a look at that. And then we're going to sand it first because um, the bit stopper will scratch up the bottom side of your body damper catch, which is fine. So this is me using the 2000 grit sandpaper. There you go. Fairly even. Those holes are about as square as you can get doing it manually with the uh, rotary tool. Okay, next we're going to be beveling the holes for the body damper mount. So we're just doing this so that we have a little bit of an angle that allows us to give a little bit more of a, a what do you call it, an angle that allows more movement on the body damper frame because if you keep it square without that bevel, you have a lot less motion on the body damper. It's a little bit uh, smaller in terms of the way that it um, actuates with a bevel it allows you to have a much bigger um, motion on the dampers there you go we're going to be using the uh, countersunk screws so that they can uh, uh, have a little bit of a longer depth in terms of like the mount for the uh, side dampers as well so here we're going to be test fitting just to see how where i want to mount the side dampers and if i remember correctly ended up using two 6.7 millimeters uh, spacer per post. So using two posts on one side. So four pieces uh, on left and then there's gonna be four pieces on the right side as well. So that allows you to have the damper a little bit low but not too low where it could have problems with the uh, one millimeter clearance rule. There you go. So now we've mounted it in the position that we want. Um, we're going to be making the back support for the body damper frame now. And we're going to be using the 1319 uh, popsicle piece. That's the one that's a little bit more rectangular. And um, we're going to be countersinking it first before cutting off the um, excess 1319 millimeter holes because those holes we won't really need for the mounts we just need to use those two center holes to support the body damper frame there you go just use the bit stopper again honestly i really love the bit stopper if i hadn't bought this i i would be taking much longer when using the countersinking bit with this i could just press down and um, not worry for it to be um, uneven just press it down it makes it a lot easier there you go so yeah it's gonna leave a mark on the carbon I mean it's up to you um, what I would do to remove those mark is um, to sand it with 500 grit sandpaper slowly up until you can see that it's gone and then maybe a thousand and then after that hit it with 2,000 so it's going to be it's going to make that piece uh, that mark disappear but honestly it doesn't bother me as long as the piece is square which is what the uh, bit stopper allows me to do there you go we're cutting off the excess we I mount it first and um, I don't actually make it so that it's a uh, flush I'm fairly lazy when I'm cutting this specific piece off I just want it to be as close as possible to where the the frame needs to be finished so it's here, as you can see, it's a little bit protruding, but I'm okay with that. And the other side is the same thing too. It's a little bit protruding, but I'm fine with that. So here you go. We're going to be mounting the uh, support piece with countersunk screws as well. Just make sure that everything is even. And then as you can see, it's quite a square piece. Now we're going to be mounting all of the aluminum lock nuts. 
This takes a bit of time because replacing all 20 of the lock nuts that I needed to replace uh, basically bit by bit. Um, when, when you're tightening these down, you do not want to over tighten it because if you do, what would happen is that you would actually strip the threads off of the lock nuts. And if you do that, it's going to be a very difficult process. It's going to take quite a bit of time to remove that lock nut that has lost its threads. And uh, because their aluminum is a little bit of a softer metal, it's likely to happen. But as long as you don't over tighten it, it's not going to be an issue. So I actually ended up stripping one of the um, lock nuts here. And now we're going to be using the dampers. The AR damper sets where we need use to uh, we need to use two of them. We're going to be using two of the cylinder shaped ones for both sides at the side and then two bowl shaped and then two cylinders for the rear as well. Right here as you can see we have the body damper frame already pretty much built. Right here, we're just making sure that all of the dampers are a little bit loose because when they're new, they're kind of tight on the screws. So you want there to be a little bit of play on them, on their own screws, just so that they're a little bit more loose and that they can actuate a little bit better on their own. Now we're just checking to see if the frame is uh, square and mounted correctly and if it's in the position that we want it. All right, so now I'm just adjusting the uh, lock nut so that it uh, we could check the height. And here, you can't quite see it because my right arm's covering it, but it's not bouncing as much as it would. The body damper frame actually actuates quite well, as you can see right there. It's bouncing a little bit there. You can see it past my hand there. And it doesn't really bounce out of place. And even without like suspension, with the way that uh, Super 2 is a little bit of more of a flexible chassis, with that cut that I made, it has a little bit more power. So there you have it, guys. This has been building the body damper frame. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please like, subscribe, and share. And thanks for watching. Go race.